Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more videos. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Dilmer Valesillos and I've been creating games for a long time. I also been super interested in augmented reality and virtual reality and I've been doing a lot of videos and prototypes over the last few months. So today what I want to show you is how you can actually create an augmented reality experience without any coding. We're gonna go and use the Reality Composer that Apple released as a beta version. And then I'm gonna show you some of the features that it has, how we can add a behavior, how we can add different objects that Apple is providing, and also a couple of songs that Apple provides in their Composer. So let's jump into the Composer and start working on it. Let me show you what the Reality Composer is all about and how we can use it in our Macs. So, I've been trying to get it to work in my iPhone device, but it keeps crashing. So, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's because I have the latest version of Mac OS, which is Catalina, or Apple is still working on it. But I'm going to show you the, the UI and then the Mac OS version and some of the capabilities that it has. I know that when Apple releases a feature or two, it will be working. So, I'm not really worried about that. But at some point, when I get it working, I'll do another video where I show you how I can run this scene or any type of scenes that I create with the Reality Composer on my iPhone device. So what you're seeing right now is the Reality Composer for Mac OS. You, as soon as you open it up, it tells you what kind of anchor. And for those of you who, who have watched my videos on augmented reality, you, you probably know and you're familiar with some of these anchors when you, you know, if you want to do a frame or if you want to hang a TV, which I did some videos about, you could do more of a vertical experience just like this. And if you want to play something horizontally, you can do a horizontal anchor. And then they also have an image anchor, which is actually very popular for, you know, for things like using Air Foundation or, or Magic Leap. That's something that is very common. And then they also have something called face for augmented faces using the front facing camera. So I haven't played with this one yet, but I've been playing with the other ones, but I will be doing more videos as I learn more about this. So one of the things that are cool about this is you don't need to be a developer to create an experience. This is all node based. So you can add behaviors, you can add objects, you can do almost everything, you know, using this application. And of course it's limited, but it gives you a real sense of augmented reality. And if you're a 3D artist and you want to, create 3D models and then seeing how those models look in, you know, in augmented reality, then this is something that it's going to allow you to do so. So I'm just going to give you an overview of how this works. I'm going to start with the horizontal anchor. So we're going to select it and then I'm going to click on choose. And then as soon as I do that, it gives you, you know, uh, basically a, a cube that is the default cube. And you have different options in here if you want to change the anchor. I can also change the anchor right here and you can see how it shows the cube on the wall. I can also do the image and looks like it requires some additional components, but we're going to ignore it for now. And then you can also do the face, which looks like it can't even, oh, looks like it does work. So in the instances where you want to, you know, put a cube right on your face, this is something that you could use to do, to do that. So what I'm doing to basically rotate, I'm holding my shift key to rotate. If I want to get closer, I can hit the, I think it's the, the option key and it's scrolling up and up and down. So I have a touch, basically a touch pad. So I'm holding the option key and then scrolling up and scrolling down to get close the command, the command key, and then dragging around with my touch pad allows me to drag around and then, you know, I can do the rotation. So this is very common for applications that are 3D. The, the commands are very common. I'm going to make this bigger so we can see more of the screen. So the other thing that this gives you is the ability to change the scene. So right now you can see that we're starting with the untitled scene, but you can, you know, if we wanted to save this and give it a more, you know, a more clean name, we can do that. What I'm going to do instead of, you know, put it in my desktop, I'm just going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it Reality Composer. And then inside of it, I'm just going to do scenes. And then this one, I'll just do hello world, which is going to be the introduction to this. I know years from now, I'm going to look at this and I'm going to 
I'm gonna realize that this is something that everybody do, everybody uses. So it's kind of cool to be one of the first ones who is using this. And I'm really excited about this technology, to be honest, I, I really love augmented reality. But anyways, that's another subject. You, you probably know if you know me that I love this. So the other thing that I can do is I can do also an object selection. Looks like I can't really change the size of this. I kind of, that's kind of a pain. But anyways, I can change the scale. If I wanted to change the scale of the cube, I can also change the position. So if I wanted to change the position of this, everything right now is set to centimeters. So if I wanted to do something like, let's try and do one, I can change it in here. I can do 10 centimeters. I can go back to zero. I can also do zero here. And I can also do zero, zero, zero. And I can also, looks like this allows me, I don't know what this is for to be honest, but it doesn't work. So, <laughs> so the other thing that I can do is I can use the handles. If I wanna go up, I can use the handles. If I want to go to the left, I can use the handles. So this is the common, you know, Y axis and then X and Z axis that you can change. It also gives you a really cool overlay showing you the distance in centimeters. And it's a little yellow, yellow bubble color that we have in there. And the other thing that I can also do is I can change the rotation. So if I want to change the rotation of the cube, I can change it to on X so if I wanted to do 100. You can see how that changes. Can also do the same thing on Y, and we can do the same thing, of course, on, on Z. So these are very, very typical for 3D applications. I'm just gonna go back to 000. I'm also gonna go back to 000 here, and then we can just move it up. I just basically snap it right there. There we go. So the other piece to this is I can also change the material. So if I wanna do, and we can get closer by holding, let me hold my option key and get closer so we can see everything. Can also do more of a matte paint, a plastic, so you can see how that changes. I'm trying to get used to the interface because this is not the same. I, I'm a Unity developer, so Unity is a little bit different when it goes to rotation, so let me make sure that I, that I get used to it. But anyway, so this is plastic. If I want to go to car paint, you can do car paint, and I'm basically scr scrolling to select different materials. So, and this is without coding, guys. I don't have to create a cube with, you know, a mesh. I can also do, this one looks really cool. This is a gold color, gold color cube. And I like how the reflection, you know, looks on the gold. And I can also do steel, looks like they have rubber and terracotta and then so on. So let's go ahead and go into gold. I think gold looks cool. So it's gonna go to that and then I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller, something like that. So. The other tools that they have is I can change the width. So if I wanted to make it more of a flat, I can make it big or I can probably just do something like that. I think that works. I can also change the height if I wanted to. I can also change the depth. So very common width, height, and depth. And then the bevel, which is going to be, I believe, the edges, which, yep, that's what it is. If I wanted to make more more of a circular. This actually looks really cool. So, and then I think it's got smaller, so we have more of a more of a cube. And then it looks like they also have physics, and I haven't really looked at physics. So they have different motions. Let's see if I do type or dynamic, and I haven't really messed with any of this. So I'm not going to I'm not going to use this unless I get more familiar. But you know, if I want to do ice or lead or plastic, wood or rubber, they have different physics for that. Also, we can add different different collisions. If you want to do automatic collision or box collision, colli colli I can't even say that collision, capsule and a sphere. And you know, from my my game background, game development background, these are very common in game development. So, but if you haven't really gone into it, I think it's, it'll be a good read if you start looking into 3D collisions, especially if you're not a developer. I think this is something that is really will be really helpful for you. So I'm going to uncheck participants. So that's basically everything that we have here on, on this component. The, the other thing that we also have is we can do behaviors. And I haven't really messed with behaviors just yet, but I know that they're available. So if you want to do like a tap, look at look like a tap to flip, to flip. I can flip an object after tapping. I can also tap to play a sound. I can tap to add a force. I can either start the object being hidden I can wait and show proximity, 
and jiggle and I can also use custom to create our own behavior. I'm just going to do a tab and then we can see what options we have. And I wish I could change the size of this because a lot of times, and I don't know why App, what Apple didn't, didn't allow that, it's, it might be because this is a more of a demo version. But anyways, so the trigger is going to be the tab and that's what the behavior told us. And it'll tell us, okay, what objects are going to be affected. It says one object. This is going to be the object that is going to be affected by a tab. So I can do that. I'm going to hit done. And now we know that this behavior is going to change, you know, something about the object. And because this action is basically making a rotation, it's going to allow us to change. Okay, I want to change the duration when I do a tab. Let's say that I change this to be maybe I want to rot a flip on over six seconds. Then I can do that. I can also do a bounce. I haven't really used this, so I don't know what to expect. And then I can do, I don't know what this is, it's a style. So anyways, if I hit play, we can see what it's doing. Oh, that's really cool. Wow, that's really cool. So it's really creating a bounce effect. And let me go ahead and change the duration. And then we're going to, I'm going to hit play. You can see how, how that is faster. Let me change it to be a little more. And then maybe here on the style, let's try playful and see what that gives us. Oh, that's really cool. And I'm going to go, let me, let me zoom out so we can see more of what's happening here. And then I'll just do something like that. Okay. I'm going to do play and you can see how that, that is really cool. And without any coding guys. So, <clears throat> you know, if you're, if you're trying to come up with an AR idea, I think this tool really is really cool because you can do a lot of it without much coding. All right. So this is one of the behaviors and it looks like they have another here, another thing here called action sequence. So if you want to change the sequence, you can add a force. Let's see what happens if we add a force. And the object cube is not dynamic simulation object. Would you like to set this? I'm not going to mess with it. I think I think this gives us enough information. Let's say that I want to add another behavior. Let's try tap and add force. Let's see proximity. And we can do the tap and, and play a sound. And then we know that this is going to be the effective object. So we're going to select it. And we're going to hit done. And now it says one object is affected. The other thing that this is going to ask us, the effect, let's see, the affected object is now set. And this is the affected object. Okay, so it looks like, I think, I think that did it because it didn't, it doesn't really, the affected object has not been set. Okay, selected objects. Okay, it says that one object is selected. I'm going to hit done. And then we're going to go here and see see what happens and then I'm just going to hit I don't know why it doesn't let us even though we did select the object I wonder if I can just delete this node and then recreate it let's try that add and then we can see if we can play a sound okay and it still doesn't know oh, okay I think I see what is happening so you have to set the, the affected object on this node to be the trigger and now on this node to be the there we go the affected object on the play sound. So you have to do it on both. And then I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hit done. And now we have a selected and the audio clip looks like it doesn't have there's not an audio clip selected. I'm just gonna hit download and hopefully this doesn't take that long. But it's basically gonna allow us to download an audio clip. And let's see what this is complaining about. Okay now it's complaining about because we don't have a clip selected. And oh okay there we go. So we have a couple. Let's see. We can do a dog bark. <laughs> Let's do that one. And then now we can hit play. Let's hit play on the whole thing. We can see that, that it's working. Let me see if I can hit play here and see what happens. There we go. It's bouncing and I'm also selecting the... That's cool. And honestly, guys, this is the first time that I, that I do this. But... The other thing that we can do that I'm, well, I'm hoping that we can do, we can change the name of this. Okay, yeah, we can. So this one is going to be tab and bounce. Let me, okay. And then this one right here is going to be tab and play a sound. So I'm just going to rename it just to show you that we can change bounce. Let's see, tap and, and play sound. Play sound. There we go. Okay, and then there's other behaviors, of, of course, you can mess with, but I think this gives us a really good st starting point. 
So let's go ahead and add another, another object. And this object is going to be text. And you can do that by just clicking in here. I'm going to select it. I'm going to go to my properties. And I'm going to go up. And this is going to be my hello world. And I'm just going to change this one to hello world. There we go. And then I don't know if I can change how big. Let's see the height. Oh, there we go. I think that's perfect. I can also change the thickness if I want to make it really thick. Let's go ahead and make it really thick. And then I show you the positioning. And I can also change the scaling. So positioning is the same thing. Rotation is the same thing. So if we wanted to do maybe a little bit of rotation in there, we can do that. And let me see if we can, we can change this a little bit. And let me pan. And there we go. So the other thing that this has is also materials. So let me see if I can if I can select another material. Maybe a metallic material looks cool. Or we can do a bronze. Or we can also do a gold. And I'm going to go ahead and do, let's see. I think alumi aluminum sounds good. And it's hard to see, but that is, oh, there we go. I think that gives it a really cool reflection there. And let's go back and see what the other options we have. So this is going to be a text. So we're, you know, we're going to have different fonts that we can select. I can change, you know, to be this to be a different font size or font font style. We can do Futura, more of a futuristic style. I uh, can also let's go ahead and change a different one because that one doesn't fit really well. I can do copper plate, and we can do you know an aerial, which are very common. We can actually select that one. I think that one looks cool. And and of course you can do a style if I want to do italic. If I want to do bold. I can do bold, and of course I can do all that. I wish I could find out how to fit more, because this is this is not fitting every time I go really big, and for whatever reason I think I think that's fine. Let's just keep it let's keep it simple, and then there we go. So that's our hello world, and we also have a cube. So let's go ahead and add you maybe a rotation on this and give it a behavior. So I'm gonna go into my behaviors. Let's click here. And then in this one, so if we're bouncing, we're going to be basically colliding with that. I don't want to do that. I'm going to just offset this one. And then maybe when we select this one, we do something different. So let's go ahead and add and click on Add. And so if, we can get, if we can add another type of behavior. And let's see, start hitting, wait and show. And let's let's do one that we already, that we, let's do the tap and flip. I think that one was cool. And then we can change the name here. This is going to be the text. We can just do text with bounds. And let's see. So we have this object as selected. Yep. And that's the one that is selected. And then in this one, we're going to be selecting that one. Looks like it did it. And then we can probably just change. Let's try and do a spin. See how that looks. And let's do a spin of maybe two seconds. That's really cool. There we go. Okay, let's actually do a spin, a faster spin. There we go. And then so we're tapping and we're gonna spin it. So that's that piece. And I'm gonna hit let's go ahead and hit play. And let's hit stop here. I hit play to play it or scene. I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna select this. That's really cool. I'm gonna keep saying that because you know you guys saw it. I didn't even do any coding. Alright, so we have a cube, we have text. Let's see what other objects we can add. So I'm going to add another different object, and let's see what we have here. So these are cool. These are basic. I think those are great. But I want to do something more, more realistic. Let's see. We can do a donut. We can do a muffin. We also have food for kids, and we have some fruits. Those are cool. And let's see what, what else we can find. We have a donut there. And let's see, a carrier. And <laughs> that's cool. We also have houses that we can select an ATM machine, batteries. Let's see, there's just too many options. Okay, so because I am I love sweets, I'm going to do a donut. I'm gonna double click it, and then it's gonna add a donut to our scene. And let me go ahead and change the perspective here a little bit. I think that works. Okay, let's make that donut jump as well. So I'm gonna add another behavior, and I'm going to tap and flip. And this one is going to be, I'm just going to rename it. Let's just do sweet jump. I think that's fine. And then, of course, we have that selected. We also have that selected on the em emphasize. 
and then this one we can use to let's try another one and see see what we get with the other one. Oh, that's gonna be a big donut. Okay, let's go ahead and change that. Let's try a blink. Oh, that's cool. We can do. Okay, let's try a different motion. Let's do. Let's do jiggle. Oh, a big jiggle. Let's do. Let's change it to be playful. There we go. That's a playful jiggle. All right, I'm gonna keep it. I think I like that, and we can probably make it bigger. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna hit stop here. I'm gonna select it. Go to properties. I want this donut to be very big. And let's go ahead and just offset it. And yeah, I want to make it. Want to make it a big donut. And then what I'm gonna do? Let's go ahead and change it just a little bit smaller. I don't want it to take the. You know, I don't want it to be the thing that takes the most emphasis, even though it's the coolest thing out of all. So now I'm gonna hit play, and then this one is jumping, jumping. We have a little dog here, and we have our thing rotating. <laughs> That's cool. I'm gonna do it one more time, and then we'll wrap it up. And then here's our jumping donut. So imagine running this in the in AR. So that's what I'm gonna do on the next video once I get it working. But I hope you enjoy this video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, guys, because it's really gonna help me in bringing you more videos. So thank you again. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.